guys and um, as usual welcome to another kit review okay so this one is out of the stash again right so today we're having a look at a kit from Tamiya in 135th scale it is the Schwerer Panzer Sparwagen 8 rad SDKFZ 232 8 wheeled armored car okay this is basically the configuration that uh, existed in the invasion of Poland and the invasion of the Low Countries and France. Okay, so as you can see, she's an actually large car. She has accessories on it. This kit does include the commander figure. Okay, now the kit number for this one is 35036. That's what's on the box. This is based on the original Tamiya kit from 1974 and um, I'm reluctant to say it's a rebox. I would say it's a reissue because um, the original box looked exactly the same as this. So the original kit number was MM136 and as I said, okay, this kit number is 35036. So there's your link. All right, so 1974, I do remember making this back in the 70s as well. So it's probably exactly the same kit. But you know what? It was fairly cheap. I think it cost me around 20 something dollars Australian. So can't argue with that. All right, so let's have a look at the box art. As I said, this is your um, more... Low Countries, France, because when the initial um, eight wheel armor cars went into Poland, they didn't necessarily have this. They found that it was susceptible to um, being hit with anti tank guns, etc., and even um, heavy anti, anti tank rifles would put these out of commission. So they added this extra piece of armor to the front which also came in handy for adding jerry cans, etc. on. Okay, so let's have a look at the rest of the box. So on the side, we've got one painted in a raw dark yellow with red brown camouflage stripes. It's all Japanese, so this is a history of the vehicle that had 20 millimeter gun on it, etc. Um, I can't read Japanese, so I can't tell you what else it says, but it is definitely a history because it mentions SDKFZ232 several times. Tamiya's address. On the other side, some other classic Tamiya kits. They call it a hunting tiger, so it's a Jag Tiger, Centurion, M60, KV1, and a Type 61. Japanese medium tank, which is a very definitely um, post-war, almost like a Walker Bulldog in shape. Okay, so that's the box. Let's find out what we actually got. All right. So it is definitely an old kit. It has Tamiya's old style instructions in it. Full Japanese and full English. All right, so we'll have a look at those shortly. And we have one bag of sprues, which has the upper hull, the commander figure, turret, and the wheels, plus the decals. Next bag has got the mudguards, accessories such as cable, packs, etc. And other fittings for the front of the vehicle. Okay. And then, of course, we've got the hull, which is one piece, no chassis, fairly straightforward, no interior, even though you do get separate hatches for the side. And that's what you get in the box. In a second, we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. All right, so classic Tamiya from the 1970s. It gives you a full history of the vehicle. It gives you specifications um, such as pilot models were brought to the Kummersdorf and Wundstorf, 
proving grounds of the German army. So this is what I like about Tamiya. They give you a full history of the vehicle. It's development, when development first started, projections, etc. And where it carried on from there. Okay, so that's the front. There's your 8-wheel. These are a couple of variants of the 8-wheel. That's a 231, 233 and a 2344. Okay, so that's with the short gun on it. I've done a review of the Italeri 2344 with the 75 uh, millimeter pack gun on it. Okay, so that's the first page. Always read the history. It does give you a great insight into the actual model that you're building. And next is the second page. And the history carries on. Tells you what it was um, armed with. The variants, as in two, three, three, eights. The eight rad is basically eight wheels. Okay. So that's a two, six, three. It's a radio. And you will see a uh, film from the war of these. So it's a command eight wheeler. Two, two, two. And 232, both of which were, and I believe they're still available. I don't know if this is still available as a a kit. I believe someone does actually have this out there somewhere. And then, what I always like, this is your standard reconnaissance battalion formation for a Panzer division. So, if you're wondering where your vehicle will fit in the hierarchy... And it does explain here what each vehicle it is. This is standard reconnaissance. So when you come to putting your markings on, you can decide where you want this. Third platoon has your eight wheels. First platoon has your four wheelers. Okay. Second platoon, same as first platoon. So this had your two, two, twos, etc. in it. Okay. That's always a handy guide to keep around. If you're ever doing a diorama and you want to decide what vehicle you're going to represent, these come in very handy. Okay, so that's the front and the next page. And these are an interesting fold-out instructions anyway. Let's have a look. So, here's your colour call-outs. Right, tell shows you where your decals go. It gives you a choice as to, and this does include tactical and divisional markings, including Africa Corps. So if you want to paint this in uh, dark yellow overall, it does give you painting uniforms up to 1940, which is the commander figure in this kit from 1940 and also Africa. All right, and. What I also like is this. It gives you a breakdown of the actual eight-wheel steering suspension chassis. Even though this kit doesn't have it, this gives you a great idea of the capabilities of this vehicle. All right, so that's your painting. Like I said, overall dark grey, overall sand yellow, and uh, camouflage combinations whatever suits you. All right, so let's have a look at the construction of this kit. Start off with the running gear, transmission, and because this is an old kit, it tells you what the pieces are. Suspension, transmission, leaf spring. All right, nowadays a lot of kits just give you a number. This will actually tell you on these instructions because they're old instructions what these actual parts are all right and even though it does give you um tell me your reference numbers it also tells you what color so it says chrome silver for the headlights mm, yes and no maybe okay so running gear right suspension etc tires they all go on the bottom hull section it does look complex, but it's not that complex. This is a fairly base 
um, Tamiya kit from the 70s, so fairly easy construction. So long as you follow the steps, you should not have a problem. Does not have an interior, okay, but it does have a reasonable detail running gear. Wheels go on, upper hull goes on the bottom. Mud guards, okay, plus the accessories that go on the mud guards like your tools, etc. So it says here. Um, bulletproof plate was not fixed to the early type car. All right, when you assemble at this early type, cement plate A22. So, yes, they found that um, invasion of Poland, these were prone to anti tank rifles and all sorts of things because the armor was actually quite thin. So, they added an additional armor plate to the front because this is a reconnaissance. That's the first thing you're going to see front of the vehicle. Okay, so by the time the invasion of France and the Low Countries, they'd already kind of sorted that problem out. All right, so then turret. You do get the back hatches, but there is no interior to the turret. This is the most critical part, all right? This is where your top aerial fits. So you have to make sure that those mountings are actually fairly square on. And then you've just got more accessories going on. Jerry cans, tow cable, spare tire, etc. Shows you how to put your commando figure together. And that's it, basically. Aerial is one piece. A couple other parts that go on the aerial. Alright, and that's critical to make sure that your supports all line up so that the pivot point here on the turret is all nice and square and that's it and it does tell you here fixing accessory parts so that fixing the accessories helmets jerry cans etc is entirely up to you because it would come down to a personal choice by the crew where they're going to fit these things you'd want your helmets exactly where you could reach them straight away if you had to bail out you'd want a helmet with you you don't want to be running around with nothing to protect your head and someone's firing at you and that's it so literally 11 steps 11 steps no more than that fairly easy construction probably quite easily get this built in a day without too much drama too much rush and then it just comes down to painting and as i said all over dark gray or if you're going to do a um, Africa core all over dark yellow just like it says on the back fairly straightforward it does explain here how they were painted okay four types eight wheel reproduced between 3742 etc etc and then it does explain how you apply the decals and it does explain okay what the divisional marks are what the tactical marks are motorcycle unit okay panzer grenadier division it's got the helmet third panzer division it's got the what i would call a peace sign so to speak 15th panzer division okay so fairly straightforward it does call it the adolf hitler brigade which participated in the balkan battle 1941 that would be the leap standard Adolf Hitler, I think. All right. And that's the instructions. Let's have a look at the decals. Okay, so. Oops, sorry. There is. There's no copyright on the decals. So this, like I said, this is a new reissue of an old kit. All right. So actually, the plain white crosses are for um, Poland basically and then later on they changed to because a plain white cross like that is a perfect aiming point for a anti-tank gun all right that's exactly what you train to shoot you see something like that on the side of a vehicle that's what you're going to shoot for so that's when they started putting black in the middle to reduce the aiming point 
the decals fairly sharp as you can tell you have SS and their mark number plates and tactical and divisional marks and the register looks really good they are as I said a new issue so they're very sharp okay and that's the instructions in a second we'll have a look at the sprues okay so let's have a look at the sprues first up we'll have a look at the hull itself okay so as I said this is an 1974 kit it does have hinge details they could be a bit heavy but I'm not sure I've never actually seen my, a real uh, 232 so I couldn't tell you basic detail on the bottom basic engine all right so not much in the way of rivets and bolts etc it does have I don't know if you can see that there we go get that in focus all right, so that is just um, a bit of venting for the engine. Keep it a bit cool. All right, there are bolts and details and things on the outside, but apart from that, not a great deal. Nothing on the inside. In fact, let's have a look. See, can we see a copyright on here? Oh, sorry. That went out of focus. I'll have a look, seeing if there's a copyright. No, there isn't, but it does have. So, the good thing about Tamiya is when they reissue or continually issue kits, they always keep the molds clean and up to date. They may not. And increase the level of detail but at least they're clean with very little flash okay so next sprue out is the upper hull as you can see it has hinge details hinge details on the engine louvers etc not much in the way of bolt details all right but simple basic straightforward kit same goes for the turret hinge details but as for bolt details not much at all that's your 20 millimeter fairly basic you could replace that with an aftermarket if you wanted to i believe they are available this is your radio antenna okay supports that's going to be well it shouldn't be too hard to get off in one piece so long as you take your time okay so there's your commander figure dressed in up to 1940 uniform and that is there you go there's the copyright on the sprue right there 1974 okay so the commander figure it's okay wouldn't say wonderful we'll need a bit of cleanup if you get some aftermarkets figures for this you'll probably be better off he looks a bit heavy in the features all right so that's the first route Screw the main body. Next screw we'll look at is the mud guards and the front armor plate. Okay, jerry cans, etc. So let's have a look. So, basic detail there is some bolt detail, but very little 
detail on these mud guards. Probably not super accurate. Same goes for the front plates. So it is an old kit, as I said. That's your dry shaft cable. So the armor plate, yeah, there's very little bolt detail on this because it is. There is a bit of flash around the mold marks on this one. And again, 1974 on the sprue. Okay, so as I said, this is a current reissue of a 1974 eight-wheeled armored car. Alright, the next screw we're going to look at is the wheels. So you got your eight wheels, spare wheel, all your running gear and suspension. Okay, this is just your inner part of the wheel. So let's have a look at some close detail. Alright, so the wheels do have bolt detail on them. Okay. They do not have a manufacturer's name or rating. Alright, so most rubber tyres, whether they're military or civilian, will have a manufacturer's name on it. The suspension. Okay, so the suspension, leaf string suspension. Okay, and the actual arms, etc. They do have some detail, but not a huge amount. So as I keep saying, there are bolt details, but nothing spectacular, okay? So, yeah, like I said, 1974 kit. Alright, easy put together. Alright. Easy put together. Alright, and... Last sprue, it's just your accessories, hatches, bags, cable, etc. Mainly your hatches and things, exhaust pipes, details good, hatches have hinge detail, but not much else. Alright, you do get four helmets, a bucket, a couple of satchels, and a roll, tarp roll, and tools. So you can display those or use them anywhere you like on this vehicle or not at all. Okay, and that is the last screw. So that brings us to the end of this review. Okay, as I said, this is a current issue. I got this um, over a year ago. It's still available, it's still being issued by Tamiya. It is original from 1974, but the molds are clean, there's not much flash, and it's an easy, good kit for a beginner to put together. In fact, anyone, and um, then just spend the time dressing it up bring her up, up to your standards all right so as usual i hope you got something from this and um until next time take it easy